Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm honored and privileged to welcome a very highly decorated soldier from the Indian Army, Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia. General Bhatia, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ashtar Garg. Uh, thank you indeed. It's a great honor to be on a platform and Jahin to all your viewers. Thank you so much. Jal Bhatia is the former Director General of Military Operations. He is a Param Vishish Seva Medal, an Ati Vishish Seva Medal, and a Sena Medal. And for those of you who don't know, these awards are given by the President of India. He's an expert in disaster management. He's an author of several papers, and uh, he's been recognized, awarded, and felicitated several times. So, General, I want to start with a simple question that I ask a lot of senior people like you. From a young cadet at the NDA and the Indian Military Academy to a three-star general, what did you do right to reach the top? And what were some of your learnings and challenges? Uh, I suppose luck, luck and luck. Uh, you are too lucky, and uh, okay. forty years uh, is not easy. Right. Uh, but then, as they say, that uh, luck is 99 percent perseverance. Mm. Uh, so I suppose, other than luck, I did uh, you know, focus on my uh, job. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every moment of it. Actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's important. So you you got to be happy in what you do. Correct. Uh, so, so that happiness was there. I I was a diehard uh, army man, right from you know when third class I decided to join the army. Wow. And the parents said, come on, uh, you, know, you got to study first. I said, that's why I don't want to join the army because I don't want to study. <laughs> okay. And unfortunately, I've been studying ever since. Even my class 10th, uh, my principal said, you know, you can't uh, pass your 10th uh, you know, class. Mm. I said, uh, sir, I passed my ND, you passed my 10th, you're done. Mm. Uh, but then after one consistent, constant, uh, I think, effort uh, to move ahead, to mm. move on, mm. the constant learning process. And uh, you've got to be focused always. Uh, there's yeah. no... Uh, there are no errors in that because okay. errors you lose, life. Mm. You lose life. Mm. And life is very important. You can't lose lives. Absolutely. The, the, men, the men have to trust you actually. Mm. So, from a second lieutenant to a lieutenant general is 40 years, and I joined the parachute regiment, uh, which is the elite one. And uh, it is difficult to be uh, selected uh, because no, the Indian Army is the largest voluntary force in the world. Absolutely. And the parachute regiment is the voluntary force among the Indian Army. Mm. And then you're probated. So I think I was very, very lucky in that. And I joined a very good battalion, six para. They taught me, uh, as they say in the paratroops, we are a bunch of misfits who fit well together, mm -hmm. but then fitted well together. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I think uh, I owe is to honesty. Correct. And when I say honesty, I don't mean honesty in the financial terms. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I say honesty of intent, honesty of purpose, honesty of action, honesty in your what, what all you want to do, honesty in relationships. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I think, is a very important uh, mm -hmm. uh, part of uh, Going back, mm -hmm. uh, I got good mentors. Uh, uh, I learned from them. Uh, my men were the best mentors, actually. Absolutely. They taught me so much. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may take a little longer, I'll give you a small incident. Absolutely. As Please. Second, mm -hmm. as second, you know, you, you uh, got to go and check the duties at night. Mm -hmm. so that the, everything is right. So I went to check the duty, and uh, the time was at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting there. I was a non drinker, though. But then, uh, you know, uh, paratroopers are meant to drink. So mm -hmm. I had a drink. Because it was, the done thing, the mm -hmm. march went off. Mm -hmm. And when I went to check the duty, my GSU over there, so the patient said, and he's 96 years old today, and we are in touch still. Mm -hmm. He took me all around, showed me what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. And then he says, oh, I'll tell you one thing. I said, please. He says, never drink and come on duty. Okay. And something I followed on. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it, it has been a tough one. It's not easy. It's a tough one. Uh, mission orientation. Uh, you got to be focused on your mission. Mission comes first. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to develop the win-win uh, sort of uh, spirit in your men. You got to trust the men. Mm -hmm. Never, never ever lose your temper. Mm -hmm. Because if you're angry, that means you're not in control of things. Correct. So these are some things I suppose I learned. Uh, I had. Uh, mm -hmm. I was lucky. As well. Fantastic. I mean, you're being very, very modest, <laughs> but I guess that's a part of General Bhatia. But one of the other things that I've often wondered, you know, when senior people like you lead such large number of people what is your leadership style that 
you know, encourages or makes people do whatever you would want them to do in battle or in different difficult terrains? I think uh, uh, there's a very straightforward leadership style. It is uh, follow me. Hmm. Uh, in Hindi, we say, Mere move. Hmm. Uh, and the men trust you, they develop their trust in you. They know they have a confidence in you. You have a confidence in them. Hmm. And when you move, they know that, uh, say, uh, you know, Bhatia Saab hai, Fateh hogi, we will achieve victory hmm. and we will return safe. Hmm. So these are two important factors. Mission accomplishment, victory, hmm. and safety of the men. So they trust you to do that because you train them well, you associate with them. Hmm. And uh, you, know, uh, uh, you want to be good to your, you know, uh, uh, everywhere. It's team, basically. Hmm. It's not hmm. you. You, hmm. you don't matter at all. You're a, nobody if the team is not good enough. Hmm. And uh, one of the things which I always felt was that I keep the I keep the Bhagwan and the Jawan, the God and the men at the same pedestal. Wow. They're equal to they, they know exactly what I'm doing, what I am meant for. There's no fraud. They, you cannot fool them. Mm. Uh, you cannot fool the gods above. You cannot fool the men. men. Mm. And that is, I think, one leadership quality which is a must is your full trust, uh, your honesty, uh, your ownership of what you do. Mm. Uh, you should learn from your mistakes. Mistakes will occur. Mistakes mm. will happen. There's nothing wrong with mistakes. Mm. Uh, you, you can't have the fear of failure. Most of us have a fear of failure. My comfort zone is, okay, I will not do anything, so I will not do anything wrong. I will not fail. Mm. So if you're not failing, you're not succeeding. And, uh, you know, army is high risk. Uh, it is high risk, high reward. Okay. Uh, you, have take, you have to take the risk. And you have to be alert always. You know, mm. In the NDA, there's a prayer, NDA prayer. And one sentence in the NDA prayer sticks to your lifetime. It says, oh God, help me to do the harder right than the easier wrong. Mm. Uh, it may be said, but the harder right than the easier wrong is something we have to follow in life. Mm. And uh, especially when you are uh, heading an organization or part of an organization, why heading? Why you know part of the mm. organization? Mm. And that pays dividends. Mm. Never ever you know scold uh, 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 anyone, uh, anyone. You, you have to carry them along. Well, mm. he's being the best one. You have to have tolerance for ambiguity. Okay. You have to have tolerance for fools also. It's mm. very important tolerance. For I, I may sound very foolish in saying. No, that, no. Well said. But, well said. You know, you know, the good you will always take along. The mm. good is easier part of it. Hmm. The more difficult part of the passengers, the, you know, what you call the people who do mistakes, hmm. you want to recognize everyone's work and make them a part, essential part of your team. Hmm. It's team work. It's a clockwork. We have done so many operations. I was part of the Maldives operation, my commander, hmm. Sarah. Hmm. It was synchronized. It was just teamwork because hmm. we were trained so hard. Hmm. And we were trusted each other. And, and especially you know, on the paratroopers, you have to trust each other. You, you know, when you jump out from an aircraft, hmm. you, you are the first one. Correct. Right? Correct. The leader. Mm. Everyone follows you, mm. and you are the heaviest loaded one. Mm. You know, everyone jumps at the bad loads over 25 kgs. Mm -hmm. But as, an, uh, as a leader, you want to have more than that, 30 kgs of load on you. Wow. And uh, I, I have a 21 bones broken. But everyone, you know, told me, you carry it on. Fantastic. So leadership is, uh, is more in the mind. Mm. You know, the mind space is very important. Absolutely. Well said, yeah. sir. Well said. So, you know, one of the things that uh, I've, I've, been, I've been speaking to a few senior uh, army leaders and one very interesting comment came from someone and I'm going to ask you that as a question. It is often said that a Chinese soldier fights for his party, his political party, which is the People's Liberation Army. A Pakistani soldier fights for his religion and an Indian soldier fights for his motherland. I'd love to get your perspective on this. Absolutely right. You know, the PLA is the uh, instrument of the Communist Party of China. Correct, sir. Right. So PLA is it's not a it's not a uh, it's not an army of the nation. It's not mm. citizens. It's, it's a Communist Party. Mm. Whereas the uh, Pakistan, of course, as they say, Pakistan owns a nation. You know, but Pakistan army is Correct. But having said that, let me also say, both having dealt with the PLA mm. and the Pakistani army, both are professionals. Both mm. are good. Mm. Their drivers will be different. Correct. And always respect to adversity. So mm. Something we should never do is never underestimate adversity. And there are adversities. Yes. Right? And whenever we dealt with them, they are professionals. Mm. The Pakistani army, uh, the driving, driving force may be religion. There is mm. religion rather. Mm. Uh, but it's a, it's a professional army. Mm. And so is the PLA professional army. Sure. That is why we had people tempered along the borders for 40 years. Yeah. Uh, high altitude area where the tempers are very high and the temperature very low. Mm. Uh, right? So it's not easy. So, But Indian soldiers are by far the best. Correct. The Indian soldier costs the minimum, mm. delivers the maximum. Mm. His residence is 
par excellence. Mm. No, uh, he can survive anywhere, sustainability, survivability. And what, what, what you like about this one is that we are the most battle hardened combat which force anywhere in the world, especially mm. in hybrid war. No, we could do Karakil, imagine. Mm. Well said. Who could ever do Karakil? Well said. Who could one of the you know, defense attaches there was taken after Kargil mm-hmm. and happened to be there. Mm-hmm. He says, well, you must be crazy to attack such features. I said, of course, mm-hmm. of course, all about being crazy. He said, would have nuked them. Mm-hmm. Would have nuked them. Mm-hmm. So, if we could do Kargil, if we can do the NDC, what we have mm-hmm. done you know, mm-hmm. there, I think we can do anything. See, Absolutely. Actually. Well said. So, well, men are very good. Our, mm-hmm. our army is very, very good. Oh, absolutely. And what drives us? What drives us is the Nam Nam of Krishna. Mm. The name, the salt, the loyalty, mm. and the Nishan of flag. flag. So that is a unit is that my unit is that my regiment is that my army is that my nation comes first and foremost every time. Mm. Mm. And the Nam Nam of Nishan and what we imbibe into them as saying Vafadari, Bahadri, mm. Imamdari. Mm. You know, be loyal, be brave, and be honest. Yeah. So these are few things which really drive us. Yeah, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. Uh, so, uh, Jarla, moving on, uh, you know, my father was in the 1962 war, uh, up in, you know, and, and I used to hear from him all, all about all the challenges of equipment, etc. Today's army is a much, much more, more, more modern uh, army. How has technology changed the army over the last four decades that you have been a part of it? No, uh, honestly, <clears throat> today we live in a different world altogether. Mm-hmm. I, I joined uh, uh, in 1974, I was mm-hmm. trained in 1970. Uh, technology was just not there. Correct. There's no technology. Mm-hmm. No, we use bicycles and bikes and graduate on bikes. But mm-hmm. today, everything about technology. Mm-hmm. No, it's not only geopolitics, it's not only geostrategy, it's not only geoeconomic, it's geotechnology which drives the world powers. Correct. And honestly, I think we are we are a little lethargic in that. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we want to absorb Mm. Uh, induct the technologies, we got to absorb the technology, we got to exploit them. But again, the Indian soldier is, uh, his adaptability is fantastic. When the right. technology comes in, uh, right. the way he adapts to it, the way he mm. exploits it, uh, he, he may not be you know, very well educated as we say. Mm-hmm. But education is not degrees alone. Education True. is a lot of experience mm. from, uh, from the job training. And uh, we have uh, 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 imbibed some good technologies. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I will not say that I'm happy with it. Mm-hmm. We need more and more. Mm-hmm. But at the cost of technology, we should also make sure that our ethos, uh, you know, our uh, military ethos, is not uh, degraded by the technologies. Okay. So the man will still continue to drive mm-hmm. uh, the force, and he's very important. Mm. So today we live in a technological world. Everyone is on a five and a half. Earlier the five and a half inch was the mind space. Today five and a half inches is on a palm. Mm. So you put everything it will, and we are getting, you know, we are not using our mind so much. Mm. If I have to calculate, I need a calculator to calculate. We never used anything. We mm. had no aids. But we have to live in today's world, a network world, interconnected world, and in technology, especially in warfare, is very important. Mm. We are looking at multiple warfare. Exploiting technologies, reducing mm. costs, being more cost effective, efficient. Mm. So, we'll have to look at you know, uh, artificial intelligence in a big way, you know, intelligence surveillance radars in a big way, especially mm. along our uh, unsettled borders with China mm. and Pakistan, both uh, along the LC. Mm. So, we have to exploit technologies. And our uh, men, have, uh, but 80 to, 70 to 80 percent of the military hardware is go to medium technologies. Mm. It's only about 15 to 20 percent of its critical technologies. Mm. This technology should be Indian in character, Indian in you know uh, uh, Correct. Uh, usage. Mm. It should adapt to us. We are a tropical country. We are not recognized as a mm. We can't just buy technology and then adapt it. Though the, I have take a little longer. You know, the, the Indian soldiers, uh, and when I say soldier, I mean sailors and air, yeah. air, air warriors. All Absolutely. Now look at us. We got uh, hard military hardware from Russia, sixty-five percent. We got from US. We got from. France, we got from Israel, we got from South Africa, mm. and all this comes to us. And we, I don't know how we manage it. That's something I've been studying all along. Mm. And we exploit all this. Well so, Indian condition. Mm. So, that is where I think uh, we have the adaptability mm. and the flexibility and the will to absorb and end up. Mm. Very, very good. <laughs> so, you also mentioned, sir, about artificial intelligence uh, a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> now is the age of cyberspace, space wars, 
President Trump even went and formed a minister, you know, a, 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 I think a unit for cyber, uh, cyber war or space, space war. I'd love to get your perspective on what you see as the future of war in the world. Of course, leaving aside what is happening in Ukraine and uh, Russia, and I'd love to get your perspective on that as well. We, we are looking at a, a multi-domain warfare. Mm. Uh, so future, future warfare will be multi-domain, multi-dimensional, fought in many key battle spaces. Mm. Uh, it is not only linear, which we are talking about. The linear, linear part will be a uh, will be a very essential, you know, subset of the war. Mm. Uh, that is not going to go away anywhere. You know, mm. what we talk about the war. But a full spectrum of war today, right from low intensity conflict, where we also have hybrid wars, gray zone warfare, and right up to the nuclear. And including the cyberspace, mm. uh, including space, uh, special operations, these are the future warfare domains. Mm. Uh, why do nations go to war? Nations go to war to impose their will on their adversary. Correct. And that, that is why, you, you put, of course, war is not an option ever. Mm. War is always the last. Time. Correct. But today, I don't, I don't need to go to war to impose my will. I, will, mm. I have virtual societal warfare. Uh, look at uh, the amount of uh, uh, you know, uh, interconnected people we have using smartphones in India, social mm. media platforms. Mm. And what we believe, we are not changing our thought process. Mm. I see so many posts uh, in social media. Look at look at the Ukraine war. The information war is all, it's all about it. We don't mm. know what's really happening. But mm. Information war is going on. So today, I have a virtual societal warfare. We will change the beliefs of the society. I change the beliefs of the people, beliefs of individual. Mm. And um, uh, there, there were uh, there are indicators that even the US election will interfere with the, with the social media. Mm. Mm. So we are not safe. So mm. We'll have to look at cyberspace. Uh, cyber is very critical, mm. and uh, because it can affect critical sectors all along. When we talk about national security today, it's about comprehensive national security. It is not only in the borders, not Correct. only uh, our adversary. Mm. And uh, when we talk about cyberspace, look at the financial sector. Mm. If the close on the financial sector even for a day, what happens? Look at the power sector. We we had rumors of you know Mumbai closing down, Delhi mm. closing down. Uh, look at the transportation sector, the mm. air sector. Hmm. Education sector is the worst, actually. If you hmm. ask me, today uh, I, I'm a grandfather, my grandchildren, you know, um, uh, they, they look at all the cartoons. So our value system is what can we interfere. With. Hmm. So tomorrow, when we talk about artificial intelligence, it tells us what to do. Hmm. Uh, each one of us has about five thousand, you know, data points. It is data. It's all about data. Correct. Artificial intelligence is not about data. Big data. Hmm. What are hmm. you know, five thousand data points stored somewhere in the world? Everyone knows me better than I know myself. Hmm. So uh, we need to be that not only data protection, not only de data safety. We have to be mm. sovereignty in data. Mm. So we we'll have to look at you know technology and new age warfare in all its uh, all its aspects, mm. non traditional security challenges. It's not a traditional security. Mm. Wonderful. So it's, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big, uh, uh, big game altogether. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd also like to get your perspective, sir, on <clears throat> what is happening between Ukraine and Russia. I mean, I'm sure. Uh, you are observing and you have a strong set of views on it. I'd love to get your perspective on what is going on and why is it happening? I think uh, uh, it has been in the making for quite some time. Okay. Uh, if you look at the historical aspects, mm. uh, the conflict has been in the making. And uh, we have to understand that uh, nations have the national interests and national interests do take priority. Mm. Uh, it's just that the timing is uh, totally incorrect after COVID. We are just recovering of COVID. The mm. world is, you know, Mm. It's not a new world order, it's a new world disorder. Mm. And then after COVID, we have this uh, you know, war which threatens to spread mm. uh, to the European world. Uh, Europe, of course, controls a lot of things. The US is there. Russia is a big part, let's face mm. that. And uh, I, I feel uh, Russia had a pause, I mm -hmm. feel that, mm -hmm. uh, because the national interest was threatened. Okay. So, no, no nation wants to fight a war on its borders, whether Absolutely. the US, Russia, China, mm. India, you name it. You mm. always carry the wall into your adversary's territory. Correct. That's the basic concept of war. Mm. That I carry the wall into my adversary in the adversary's territory. Mm. Right. So when Russia felt threatened, and Russia had given enough warning, don't do it, don't do it. The expansion of NATO has taken place. Mm. 16 countries have joined after 1991. Mm. So, you know, if you look at all this, I, not that my, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm totally uh, looking from a, a geostrategic and a strategic right. angle. Defense. Yes, absolutely. And I think. I do feel, let me, you know, uh, be on Russia's side for once. Mm. Uh, it's very easy to be on the Western side. Correct. Uh, we all know this perspective. Uh, Russia only employed about less than 200,000 uh, troops. Mm. So when they said it's taken time, 
I think Russia is managing it well. It's not, mm. it's not going for you know, annihilation. It's not going for mass destruction. Mm. Uh, it could have gone for mass fires, missiles. It has the wherewithal. Mm. It, it has, uh, you know, it has got two, two million uh, troops. Soldiers, yeah. It's only yeah. two hundred thousand. Mm. So that Russia is, and Russia is securing its, its interests. It is securing the southern portion, the Black Sea, which is very important. Russia, mm. the Donbas region, and to the north, mm. it's securing itself. Mm. Whereas uh, I think the, the Americans also, I must say, uh, they uh, they did miss they, they, they did misjudge and mistreat mm. the Russian, uh, mm. uh, not the intent, the rhetoric, what you call it, mm. and uh, the gainer mm. in all this will be China. Correct. The gainer will be China. Nothing wrong with it. Absolutely. 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 India, I think India has done very well. Mm. Uh, we have looked after it. First. We we should not sit on the moral high ground. We mm. don't really. You know, who are we to judge the moral I don't know whether the US, the Europeans, or the Russians. Mm. So we have done very well. We should look after our interests. Mm. It is the balance of our game going on. And India is the balancing power. Mm. But we should look at balance of interest, not balance of power. Balance Rather, of we should look at balance, we should balance the balance of power and balance of interest. Mm. We got you know 1.4 billion people, the well-being is very important to us. True. So why, why should I not look at my own interests? And that's True. what we are doing. Mm. So I think the European war will continue for some time. Mm. Uh, to achieve their uh, objectives, the strategic intent, mm. they have laid down. Mm. Uh, someone has to give in. Who gives in first? Who blinks first? That's mm. just amazing. Amazing. So I'm now generally going to move to the next part of our conversation. And I'm sure you've spent a lot of time thinking about these when, when you were working as Director General Military Operations. I want to talk to you about China. What are the challenges China represents for us? Yeah, well, you touched very raw now because as a director general military operations, my focus was mostly China. Yeah, and uh, that was the time in 2013 when we got the government of government sanction for the Asian Force, which we used to call the Mountain Four, mm. which is about 90,274 men. It's not about as much more than mm. that. Mm. So it's not that China has strung up all of a sudden. We've been planning this. You know, two divisions were raised in 19 uh, in 2009, 2010. Mm. That these raisings were there. But then everyone, you know, say, no, no, China is not a threat. It's a long-term threat. But that long-term has to become short-term sometime. True. Long-term cannot be indefinite Absolutely. and infinite. No, it is not that uh, to the power end. Mm. So that is what exactly has happened. Mm. And uh, we have unsettled borders. Uh, uh, we have to understand that. Three, four, eight, eight kilometers of unsettled borders. These are certain mm. pockets which both in. Mm. And uh, that is what we have big powers. Both mm. of us in Asian times. So we, we got... Uh, 37, 38 percent of the world's population in the two countries, both nuclear arms. Yes. So the China challenge, I think, is to data channel aggressiveness is India's challenge. Mm. What do we data channel aggressiveness? Mm. Unfortunately, most of us don't understand China. Mm. And more than that, unfortunately, Chinese don't understand Indians. Mm. We, I, I thought I was very hopeful that with two strong uh, leaders, Mr. Modi mm. with his you know, particular capital, particular mm. cloud, mm. Xi Jinping who follows Mao's diktat and Mao's mm. diktat was the land borders, we could resolve the boundary question. Mm. But the China misunderstood us. Mm. You know, they thought they will resolve the boundary question by a little bit of force, by prodding. It didn't happen. Mm. Uh, their strategic intent was not clear to us, frankly. We did mm. not expect them to do what they did mm. uh, in 2020 when the world was fighting for COVID and India was doing very well. And China was surprised by India's resolve, India's resilience uh, mm. along the border. We, mm. we, we started late, but we did very well. Mm. So today we are at a stage where uh, two of the world's largest armies uh, face each other uh, along the high Himalayas, uh, which is not a very good sign. Mm -hmm. But on the positive side, after Galwan, you know, we had no incident uh, since 25 October 1975 till Galwan. Correct. But after Galwan, again, there will be no escalation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There was no escalation. So we have to look at the positives rather than you know read people's you know agendas that you know India can take on China and China can take on India. Mm. No. We are mature people. We are very old civilizations. Correct. And we are talking. We are talking at the political level. We are talking at the military level. We are talking at the diplomatic level. Mm. Fifteen rounds of talks between the military leaders. Mm. Ten rounds of talks between the WMCC, which is the working mechanism. We had the foreign minister Wang Yi coming. The mm. as a special minister to talk. The NSC and Wang Yi talking. The, EM and the foreign minister talk, talking. Mm. So I think we'll resolve it at all. And we should not be in a hurry. With China, when you play, it's a game of patience. Mm. Uh, some wrong took six and a half years to resolve. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, but, but we have to we mm. have to understand that the 
Phenom is a 3D strategy. Mm-hmm. We need to defend the LEC. We need to dominate the seas. And we, we need to deter China's aggressiveness by binding to balance with like-minded nations with your Congress and the press. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd also like to get your view, since you spoke about dominating the sea and get like-minded people. I'd like to get your perspective on the Quad, sir. I think uh, Quad is an excellent forum. Excellent forum. We, we have Congress of Interest with the uh, Japan, with US, uh, with Australia, uh, Australia uh, especially in the, you know, in the in the Indo-Pacific, uh, mm. as we call it now, rather than Asia-Pacific. Mm. The trade passes through there. And that also happens to be China's uh, strategic vulnerabilities and mm. strategic concerns. Mm. So we, we have to, you know, China is insensitive to our concerns mm. along the LEC. Mm. And uh, India, India is no longer that India. And today, India is a risen, responsible, resident nation. We are a Correct. regional you know, power. We are a global leader. Correct. So you, you cannot be insensitive, insensitive to our uh, 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 concerns mm. and say, no, I'll do what I have to do. Mm. So uh, I think Quad is a very good forum for that. Unfortunately, Quad does not have a security uh, sort of a content, mm-hmm. uh, direct security content. Mm. And uh, that also serves us right because we, uh, we look at strategic autonomy. That's very important to us. Mm. So territorial integrity is, uh, they can have no volition of territorial integrity. We are a mm. big part. Mm. We can defend ourselves. And we have to ensure sovereign, sovereign uh, sovereignty. Mm. Uh, which is also very, you know, strategic sovereignty is important to us. We, we always maintain that. Correct. So I think we will deal with China. Let it continue. We mm. you, we have let it sense with China. It's not mm. that we don't have. Mm. But a revised China policy, I must say, should not be anti-China. Correct. No, there's not an anti-China feeling. Of course, mm. I feel hurt. at what yep. they did to us. Mm. But it should be pro-India. Mm. The difference between anti-China and pro-India. We should look at being a pro-India policy. Mm. Well Well said. And I think what has happened is that, you know, after Doklam, the general sentiment amongst the masses in our country has become pro India. And I think what you said is very right that our policy has to be pro India. Absolutely. We we, we, we are a great nation and let's start believing in ourselves. Let's start projecting it. Let's let's seek us, you know, sit on the high table. Hmm. Why not? You know, all the elite clubs, we should be driving those clubs, like whether it's WTO, especially World Bank, mm. and, and you being there, you being in a moment, right? mm. How important it is for a nation to grow. Uh, we we not been given a rightful due in the community of nations, honestly. And there's a time we get there now. Absolutely. Well said, sir. So I'm now going to come to the last con- part of our conversation, and no conversation with an army general can be complete without Pakistan, sir. Uh, so I have to uh, ask you. Uh, given what's happening today uh, between Mr. Imran Khan and General Bajwa and what we read about, Pakistan is a nation in turmoil, and it's been like this since 1947. What are your thoughts on handling our neighbor? At least with China, we still do $100 billion worth of business. I'd love to get your perspective on what is happening in China and what are the answers? Well, Pakistan, I feel, is a mischievous neighbor. Hmm. Unfortunately, the very uh, you know the driving force behind the Pakistan uh, policies is anti-India. Mm. Uh, it is not the uh, growth of Pakistan they're looking at. Right. Uh, if India loses, they think they win. It is not so. It doesn't happen mm. that way. Mm. And in the end, they have paid the cost for it. You know, they they wage this uh, proxy war, which is a low cost, high effect war for about mm. three decades plus now. Mm. Uh, whether it started with Punjab, they didn't succeed with Kashmir. Uh, terrorist operations all over India, my many capital, Delhi, Mumbai, mm. Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Bangalore, you name it, we all been there. Uh, but things are changing now. Things are changing. And uh, I'm a, a political man. I, I'm not. Absolutely. Political. Absolutely. I'm a soldier. Yeah. Uh, but uh, things are changing and the Pakistani army has to pay the cost because mm-hmm. the Pakistani army drives India policy. It is the relevance of the Pakistani army, whether domestic relevance, economic relevance, political relevance, is based on an anti India policy. Mm. Right? So uh, if India was not there, the Pakistan army, the relevance would not be there. Hmm. So we have to understand that. So we have to raise the force of the Pakistani army as such. Hmm. How do we do that? By degrading them. We did that in Uri. I think Uri was a fantastic hmm. movie. You know, Correct. a lot of people said that you know, the surgical strikes. Hmm. I went out and said for the first time, the surgical strikes happened for the first time. Earlier, cross-border strikes. We went, I've, I've done it. Hmm. I mean, part of it, both planning and execution. Hmm. But this was uh, something different. Hmm. So what we need to do is, uh, how do we change uh, Pakistan's behavior towards India mm. in the mid to long? Immediate terms not going to happen. Correct. Uh, and 
Pakistan and turmoil is not good for us actually. Hmm. So we need stable neighborhood. Absolutely. A reasonably stable Pakistan will be good for us. Hmm. But then Pakistan doesn't mend its ways ever. Hmm. Uh, and especially with Afghanistan, what is happening there, I think Pakistan hmm. is, uh, is going to have a lot of trouble. Hmm. And we need to work for Pakistan. Hmm. And the language that Pakistan understands is, uh, again, getting down to the three P strategy. The, mm-hmm. the January 3D Pakistan three P strategy. Mm-hmm. We have to be preemptive. Mm-hmm. We have to be proactive. And we want to be punitive. They have to understand they have to pay the cost. Yeah. The low cost, high effect war has to go high cost, low effect war. Hmm. <clears throat> and we are very doing very well in Pakistan. But we uh, touch wood, we haven't had a major incident since Correct. the war. Hmm. Very interesting. So on that note of uh, be, you know, be preemptive, be proactive and ask them to pay a penalty. And every time I speak to someone of your seniority and I speak to you and I'm reminded of the Naam Namak Nishan, it almost gives me a boost having grown up in an army officer's home. Uh, thank you, General Bhatia, for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your journey. You were very, very modest where you ascribed your success to luck. Uh, there's much more than luck that goes into reaching uh, where you did or where you have. Thank you for talking to me, sir, about technology, about your views on China and your views on Pakistan. Thank you again, for, sir, and good luck to you. Thank you, Vasajit. It's been a wonderful conversation with you. Thank you very much. Honored indeed. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.